The Kelpie, or Water Horse, is a powerful, malevolent water spirit found all over Scotland in its rivers and lochs. Not only does the Kelpie have a fierce and mighty equine form in which it can often overpower the strongest of warriors, it has the ability to change shape and in doing so, leverage its other skills, those of deception, manipulation, and deceit. Today I bring you a tale that will show you the devastating effects of these secondary characteristics. The Shalin of One Night In the west of Lewis, there sits a fertile glen near the village of Shawbust. And in that glen, there stands an old shalin. A shalin is a form of hut or little house, which can be found all over the wild and unpopulated parts of Scotland. These small huts were commonly used by the Scottish people as seasonal homes. As during the summer months, the cattle would be moved to mountain pastures. This gave the grass and soil around the sheltered valley settlements time to recover before the people and the cattle would return when the winter drew in. The Shalin of one night was built by a collection of families who agreed to share the residence during the warmer months while they tended their cattle. The construction was completed by May and the first occupants of the Shalin were set to arrive in early June. These tenants were two cousins in their early twenties, both with the name of Mary. In the local village, they were known by the names Fair Mary and Dark Mary due to the colour of their hair. Early one morning, the two Marys set off from the village and took with them supplies and a small number of cattle. They were to ready the shalin for the older family members and move the first group of cows. It took the pair much of the morning to reach the valley and they quickly busied themselves, caring for the shalin and the cattle. Both women had a turn at milking the cows and churning the butter. Then as the night drew in, the pair sat in the low doorway of the small hut, singing old songs and knitting. When the darkness came over the shalin and the stitches could no longer be seen, Fair Mary set light to a candle, and as she placed it by the empty fireplace, both women heard the distant sound of footsteps drawing closer. The pair returned to the door and by the candlelight saw an old ragged woman coming towards the shalin. As the figure neared the light, the pair saw the fatigue and weariness leaking from the woman's very soul. She wore a tattered and threadbare travelling cloak, which struggled to cover her frail and weakened frame. Reaching the doorway, the woman collapsed her weight against the thick doorpost. I've travelled for many long hours, and I am now completely lost. I left the village some time ago, and came up the hill to ready a shalin for my husband. But in the darkness I lost my way till I saw the light of your candle. The cousins were a little wary at first, but upon hearing the poor woman's tale, they were more than happy to offer the traditional hospitality of the Isles. The weary woman was given food and water. The Marys told the tired figure that she was more than welcome to a warm shaky dune within the Shalin. A shaky dune or shakedown was a form of bed or bedding that was very common in old shalins. It consisted of a patch of earth piled with fresh straw and heather and covered in a warm blanket. The old woman kindly accepted the pair's offer and soon all three retired for the night. At dawn the next day, Dark Mary was awoken by a warm trickle flowing across her face. Wiping her brow and opening her eyes, Mary was met with a shocking sight of dark scarlet blood running over her hand. 
She leapt up and turned to find the guest had gone, and a crimson stream of blood flowing from the breast of her now dead cousin. The woman screamed in sheer horror at the hideous sight before her. It was then she noticed bloody footprints leading to the Shailen door. Quickly the woman ran to the door and pushed it open. There the footprints turned to bloody hoof marks, and in the distance she could see a jet black horse galloping out of sight. Collapsing to her knees, the knowledge of what truly happened that night seemed to flood her mind all at once. That was the first and last night that the Shailen was ever occupied. This led to the now widely known name, the Shailen of One Night, which still stands empty to this very day, daring both the foolish and the brave alike to take their chance and see if they could survive a night with the Kelpie. Thank you for listening, and a special thank you to all my wonderful patrons who helped me keep these tales alive. It is told in some versions of this tale that it was Fair Mary who initially offered the old woman hospitality, and that was the reason that she was killed and Dark Mary survived, as if the offer to help sealed her fate due to some fey logic or knowledge known only to the dark spirits. It was said by locals from the island that the body of the Kelpie's victim was buried in the slopes to the east of the Shalin, but I am unsure of the truth of this. Like many Kelpie stories, the term Ikushka, or water horse, is used in this tale, and it is unknown whether the creature that the woman saw was a traditional Scottish Kelpie or another equine water spirit. I cover this water horse Kelpie confusion in my video on the Kelpie if you are interested in learning more. And I hope to see you all again next time for more tales of Scottish folklore. Slange va.